Hi, good morning Sean. My name is Mahira. I'm your invigilator for the OIT speaking session on the 14th of August 2023. How are you doing? Hi, good morning. I'm good. Thank you for asking. How about you? Well, I'm great. Can you tell me your full name, for the record please? My full name is Sean Davis. Okay. What is your candidate number? My candidate number is 72747472. All right. Are you taking this test as a nurse? Yes, I am. Okay. Can I see your ID, please? Sure. Here it is. Okay. Now, let's move on to warm-up sessions. The warm-up questions are not assessed and are a chance for us to get used to each other's voices. We'll just talk for two to three minutes. All right, Mihir. How well do you work with other nurses, doctors, and staff members? During my clinical training at Northeast Hospital in the emergency room, I learned how important it is to communicate well with other nurses. One night, a patient approached me to say he had been waiting for his medication for 20 minutes. I was new to the hospital at the time, so I checked in with his nurse, before deciding to provide it myself. It turned out that the patient had Alzheimer's disease, and his attending nurse had given him the medication already. This communication helped our team, to ensure the patient's safety. I used this relevant experience, to always remember to prioritize effective communication with nurses, and other staff members, to ensure my patients remain safe and healthy. How would you handle a difficult patient? While working overnight as a pediatric nurse, I had a 15-year-old patient under my care, who we were treating for an infection. The patient called me into the room several times, within an hour with various concerns. I sat down with them to ask, how they were feeling. They told me, they were scared and lonely, and they missed their parents, who couldn't visit them due to COVID-19 restrictions. I listened attentively, and validated their emotions. I also explained the treatment plan and the expected outcomes, in a simple and reassuring way. I offered them some books and games, to keep them entertained, and I checked on them more frequently throughout the night. By the morning, the patient was more relaxed and cooperative, and they thanked me for being kind and helpful. How do you handle workplace stress? Work becomes hectic very often as a nurse. I wake up early to take my dog out on walks. I try out new cooking recipes in my spare time, while listening to podcasts. I make sure that, I take sufficient time out on weekends, for recreational activities at home or with friends. When work becomes intense during peak hours, I perform simple breathing exercises to calm myself down. What are some of the most common procedures, or treatments you perform, in your current or previous role? In my current role as an operating room nurse at City Hospital, some of the most common procedures I perform are preparing the surgical site, assisting the surgeon during the operation, monitoring the patient's condition throughout the surgery, and transferring the patient to the recovery room. To ensure quality and safety in my practice, I follow strict guidelines for infection control, sterilization, and equipment maintenance. I also double-check the patient's identity, medical history, allergies, and consent forms before any procedure. I document every step of the process in the electronic health record system. How do you keep your skills and knowledge up to date? I believe that learning is a lifelong process for nurses, especially in this rapidly changing field of healthcare. To keep my skills and knowledge up to date, I regularly attend webinars and podcasts hosted by experts in my specialty area of oncology. I also subscribe to several nursing journals and magazines to stay informed about the latest research and best practices. I recently completed an online certification course on palliative care, which helped me enhance my skills in providing compassionate and holistic care to patients with terminal illnesses. Great. Thank you very much for sharing that. So, let's move on to role play now. I'll take the part of the patient or perhaps a relative, and you'll take your professional role. The purpose of the role play is to get evidence of your ability to communicate effectively with patients. 
use your ability to fulfill as much of the role play as possible. Do you have any questions? No, Mahira. You have up to three minutes to prepare the role play. You will start the role play after that time. I'll let you know when the three minutes are up. You can ask me if there is anything you are not sure about, and you can make notes on the role play card if you want to. Here's a pencil for making notes. Thank you, Mihira. You can look at the card during the test, but you must return it to me at the end of the test. Please start preparing now. Thank you. Your preparation time is over. The role play will now last for about 5 minutes. Don't worry if I stop you when the time is up. Can you start the role play, please? Hello, good morning. I'm Nurse Sean Davis. Welcome to our community health center. How may I help you today? Good morning. I have two kids, Rhea, who's 4, and Ryan, who's 2. One of my colleagues informed me about taking the MMR vaccine for them. I am here to get the details of it. Definitely, I will help you get the details about the MMR vaccine. How may I address you? My name is Mahira. Nice to meet you, Mahira. Nice to meet you too. Well, before we start, Mahira, do you know what the MMR vaccine is? Well, I've heard of it, but I'm not sure what it does exactly. The MMR vaccine is a safe and effective way to protect your children from three serious diseases, measles, mumps, and rubella. These diseases can cause fever, rash, swelling of the glands, and sometimes severe complications like deafness, brain damage, or death. 
The MMR vaccine is given in two doses, the first one, when the child is between 4 and 6 years old, and the second one, when the child is between 12 and 15 years old. That means, your children are due for both doses of the MMR vaccine. I see. But why do they need two doses? Isn't one enough? Your question is quite natural. Let me explain the need for both vaccines. The two doses are necessary to ensure your children develop strong immunity against the diseases. The first dose provides about 93% protection, and the second dose boosts it to 97%. This means that, if your children are exposed to someone with measles, mumps, or rubella, they have a very low chance of getting sick. Okay, I understand. But, I'm still worried about the side effects of the vaccine. I've heard some scary stories from my friends and on social media. They say that the MMR vaccine can cause autism, allergies, or other serious problems. Mihira, I can understand your concern, but let me assure you that those stories are not true. There is no scientific evidence that the MMR vaccine causes autism or any other disorder. The MMR vaccine has been used for decades and has been proven to be safe and effective. The most common side effects of the MMR vaccine are mild and temporary, such as fever, rash, or soreness at the injection site. These usually go away within a few days and do not require any treatment. Really? But what if my children have an allergic reaction to the vaccine? I appreciate your consciousness. The risk of an allergic reaction to the MMR vaccine is very rare. It occurs in less than one in a million doses. If it does happen, we have the equipment and medication to treat it right away. We also monitor your children for 15 minutes after the vaccination to ensure they are perfectly all right. Ah, I see. Well, you seem to know a lot about this. And I want my children to be healthy and protected from these diseases. But I'm still not sure if I want to do it today. Can I think about it for a while? Of course, you can take your time to decide. But I would advise you not to delay too long. The sooner your children get vaccinated, the sooner they will be immune to these diseases. And remember, these diseases are still around and can spread easily among unvaccinated people. You don't want to risk exposing your children or others to them. You're right. Well, would it be painful? Don't worry, we have some ways to make it easier for them. We can use a numbing cream or spray on their arms before the injection so they won't feel any pain. We can also distract them with some toys or stickers while we give them the shot. And we can praise them and reward them with a lollipop or a balloon afterward. That sounds good. Okay then, let's do it today. Thank you for explaining everything to me so clearly. You're very welcome. I'm glad you decided to vaccinate your children today. It's one of the best things you can do for their health and well-being. Now, let me get the vaccine ready, and we'll get started. Thank you. That is the end of your OIT speaking role play. All the best. Thank you. Thank you for watching. Please, like this video and encourage us. Subscribe and stay tuned for more videos. Kindly comment your suggestions and help us do better.